Okay, so welcome to your QLab tutorials uh, from Kahoot's Theater Company down at the Creation Studio. And uh, so I'm going to use these tutorials to just show you how to get some basic function using QLab. Uh, QLab, if you have used it before, you'll probably know, is one of these programs that's becoming a staple in theater production. Small scale, large scale, a lot of people are using it. Uh, it can be used for a lot of different functions. Uh, it's a very intuitive, easy program to use. Um, we're going to mainly focus on sound. We'll do a little bit of video. Uh, right now I'm set up in the studio and what you're going to hear, I'm just using the microphone built into this computer, is the sound traveling in the studio as we program. You can of course use this to just play out of your main display. You could use it just for fun at home too if you like, but uh, it's really up to you. So, with that in mind, uh, let's get started. So, getting to know the overall interface of QLab. Uh, this is QLab 3. There are different versions that are still available depending on what kind of computer you have. You will have to use a Mac to use QLab. Uh, I tend to work with QLab 2 personally when I'm just doing my basic audio stuff. QLab 3 is a more sophisticated program. It gives you a lot more options dealing with video, that kind of thing. You can also integrate camera cues, that kind of stuff. Uh, let's just go through the basic functions. So up here, we've got what's called group. And uh, when you click on any of these things, it just makes whatever you clicked on appear. So a group is a way to just group your files together. It's like having little folders. Uh, here... We've got audio, which is going to give us an audio cue. This is a mic cue. This will be a video cue, a camera cue, a title, fade. This one's going to be very important, and I'll show you that a little bit later. And then, of course, you can use these various ones, MIDI, OSC, MIDI files, time codes, start, stop, pause, load, reset, devamp, go to, Target, arm, disarm, weight, which will be quite important. Memo, which is more for your operation. And script, which is also more for your operation. So you can get more sophisticated. You can use all these functions if you really want to. But the basic ones uh, that you'll probably end up using the most is what we'll cover in these tutorials. From there, it's, it's pretty easy to just start playing around with the program. And uh, you should be able to do it on your own. Essentially, if you can make a playlist on iTunes you can easily use QLab because it's very similar. So right now we've got a group already set up and we have an audio cue. So I'm gonna move this audio cue into the group. So if I were to close this group, it goes away. This is just our group. Um, we don't really need a group, but uh, it's always good practice to do it. So let's just call this group the tutorial. Now, you'll see some issues here. Um, this tells me that a queue in the group is broken, meaning that there's it's not going to work. I can go here and try to play it as much as I like. By the way, what I'm using to play it, I'm just hitting spacebar. Uh, you can adjust that to a different button if you like, but the default one in the program is spacebar. Or you can click go up here. But as much as I try to play it, nothing's going to happen. And that's because this doesn't mean anything to the program. It just knows it's supposed to play an audio file, but I actually don't have an audio file here. So if I want to do this, I can either double click or drag a file here. So allow me to open a different file. Or if you're working the way that I've got this set up, which is a pretty easy way to work, I've just got a second window, my screen's big enough, and I can bring in, say, this song. I can actually just drag and drop. So now, when I hit spacebar, no, it would be in the program. So now when I hit spacebar, we've got music. If you ever want to stop in QLab, uh, you just want to hit escape, and it'll fade back out. So whenever I go in here, I'm armed, I hit spacebar, that's it. Now. There's different things you can do with the track. This is actually the entire song on here. But if I go into time and loops, you'll actually start to see the, the whole image uh, appear off the, the music. So I can go to a certain spot. 
Here I can choose, right? So the default start time is zero, and the end time is at the end of the song. I can change this to whatever I like. So I can make this uh, start time of, say, 15 seconds in, and I want it to end, say, 20 seconds in. 20. So I'm only going to play five seconds of this song now. Uh, it's set up to play once. I can change this to play three, four times, 20 times if I want, or I can just select the infinite loop and this will loop forever. So I'm gonna select infinite loop and we're gonna just make this into a loop. Uh, this is probably not the right spot in the song, but let's find out by trial and error. Actually, that's pretty good. So we just gotta make minor adjustments. You can either do this here. We'll just zoom in a bit to get a better view of the file. And there we go. So we've got this loop plane. So let's rename the file, because you can name your files whatever you like on here, and it really helps so you can actually know and design knowing all this uh, stuff. Uh, one thing I'm just going to mention while I'm renaming this file, just double click to rename it, uh, we're just going to call this Lou Reed Loop. One thing I'll mention is this is an mp3 file. Now. QLab prefers WAV files. It's okay if you're using a short MP3, but if you use a really long MP3, chances are it's not going to work out the way you'd like it to. It will cut out at a certain point. So whenever possible, it's best to actually use a uh, an MP a, sorry a WAV file. But it will read lots of other functions, lots of other files too. So now we've got the Lou Reed loop to come in whenever we like it. So let's add another track here. I'm going to put on just a cell phone ringing. Uh, and this is actually outside of the tutorial. So I'm not going to bring it inside the tutorial. You can see our group here. So I press play, hit the space bar, the read's going to keep playing. The next cue I want is a phone rings. <laughs> That's my magical little play that's going on. But there's other functions that I can now start to use. Because I might only want, of course, this to happen once. Uh, so if we go and click on the cell phone ring, we can go down to time loops. We can make this a single ring. And just do that the same way we did before. And now we just have the one ring. So when I play this one, it just plays once. Now, we had talked a little bit before about the idea that I could use a different uh, key to trigger it. So rather than using space, I'm actually going to now select this with a hotkey trigger. I'm going to make that hotkey trigger X. What this means is every time I hit X, the phone's going to ring. This is pretty useful because it could be a thing where you've got an actor on stage who's going to pick up a phone and if you want to be really on the ball, then you got to time it properly so it will cut off when they pick it up. And it'll ring as many times as you need it to. And maybe you want to be able to play a little bit with them so it stops for a while. And they look away and it's back. Read the audience, keep it live, right? Now... I'm going to add another effect, and this is a stop. So I'm going to bring the stop in here too. And the stop, I'm going to make a C key. Uh, I 
Actually, I'll change that because that one's actually already being used by default. It's going to be a Z or Z, depending on your preference. Now, there's an X here, which means it doesn't know what it's actually supposed to stop. So I'm just going to bring the cell phone down here. So whenever I hit Z or Z, it will actually stop the ring. So if they were to pick it up mid-ring, it'll stop. So now I can control that. All together, we can then have this thing, whole little scene happening. Blue read. Picked up the phone. Now, we, we, we may want to actually make this a little bit more dynamic. Because at the end of the day, this sounds like... It's just playing together. So if we want to play a bit with the cell phone ringing sound, we may want to adjust the levels. Now this goes for Lou Reed too. Uh, with this loop here, we can adjust the levels. This is under device and levels. Um, all you got to do is just shift these numbers up and down. It works just like it would on your average soundboard. So right now I'm just going to reset Lou Reed to zero, keep that as our neutral, and let's make the cell phone a little bit softer. So I can either adjust the left or the right uh, to give you an idea of what that would do. Actually, I'll use the Lou Reed loop so you can hear this a little bit better. Uh, hopefully it'll transfer well. So the setup that I have in the studio right now is I've got a speaker located right up in one corner here. I've got another speaker in another corner just down the road there. So that means I've got a left and a right channel to play with. And I can just bring it out on one side. Bring it over to the other side. So now to me, it sounds like it's coming from there. We can bring it up. This can be pretty useful if you want to get the idea of movement happening the space and uh, obviously we wouldn't want to be doing this throughout a whole show but I'll show you how to actually program that in just one second first let's work with the cell phone so say I want the cell phone to first of all just be quieter in general that sounds a little bit better to me I'm gonna to want it to come from just one side of the room so you may not be able to hear that very much at all. So I'm just going to turn it up so you can. So now the cell phone's coming from over there. And I can play Lou Reed. So that's the basic way that you work with programming your, your levels and uh, that kind of stuff. Now, if we want to start working with programming cues together, that's a whole different territory. Uh, actually, it's not that different. It's pretty similar. So I'm going to work with you on that in the next tutorial. So until then, goodbye.